The early modern era was a time of great advancements throughout the world, as global interactions increased and ideas spread at a faster rate than ever before. Discoveries and improvements were rapidly being made in many areas such as science and art, hence the names given to the time period, the scientific revolution and the renaissance. Shouldn't it call the artistic revolution? Shut up, me from the past. Brilliant people like Isaac Newton and Nicholas Copernicus paved the way with groundbreaking scientific discoveries and theories, while brilliant artists like Michelangelo and Donatello provided the basis and the foundations for Western art. However, there was one man who was so talented and influential that he was a figurehead of both the Renaissance and the Scientific Revolution. In fact, this man was so dexterous that he became the basis for the title of Renaissance Man. He went by the name of Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, Leonardo da Vinci. On April 15th of 1452, in the Italian city of Vinci, young Leonardo da Vinci was brought into this world. Vinci is actually the place of from where he gets his surname. Early on in his life, Leonardo quickly became known as a brilliantly minded young man rapidly expanding his knowledge in arts and science. Da Vinci's parents split when he was young, and he ended up spending a lot of time with his uncle, who had a fondness for nature that Leonardo developed. As a child, Leonardo received minimal education, and his father got him an apprenticeship with a famous sculptor when he was just 15. In 1478, Leonardo became an independent master of the arts, and by 1482, he began his first piece for the local monastery. Soon, Leonardo was working as an engineer, painter, architect, designer, and a sculptor all at once. In 1498, da Vinci finished one of his most famed paintings, The Last Supper. This piece was massive, 15 by 29 feet, and was displayed at a local monastery for all to behold. The painting was greatly influential, with its interesting and captivating depictions of human emotions from the apostles surrounding Jesus to its composition, with Jesus entered in but separated from his followers. Leonardo then moved to Florence, Italy, where he began his next work, which is eventually named the Mona Lisa. This painting is by far the most popular piece of art the world has ever known, attracting millions of people annually to the Louvre in Paris. Due to Leonardo's wide variety of fields that he worked in, he wasn't able to sculpt or paint as much as he wanted to. However, the works he did complete did plenty to add to his resume and influence artists for centuries to come. Leonardo was also a fine inventor. His notebooks are full of intricate and interesting designs for wonderful mechanisms, many of which were never built. For example, he designed a pedal-powered flying machine modeled after a bat, though it never was able to get off the ground. Among other inventions that he designed but didn't build are the 33-barreled gun, which is designed to work like a machine gun but with many rotating weapons, so it shoots much more rapidly. An armored car, reminiscent of a modern-day tank or even UFO and a first design for the parachute, though it looks nothing like the ones we know today. Although he never built any of these inventions, it had obvious impacts and influences on future inventors while working along the same lines. Some things that Leonardo da Vinci both designed and built include a crossbow, a device to measure the speed of wind, a more accurate clock, and even scuba gear. Obviously, Leonardo da Vinci was a skilled inventor and even when he didn't have enough time to build what he thought up, his brilliant mind still helped push forward the world and the scientific revolution. One more area Leonardo da Vinci was very invested in was the field of anatomy. In fact, the image you are seeing on your screen right now depicts a logo of an anatomy organization based off a famous drawing by Leonardo da Vinci of the human body. Early on, Leonardo was using his drawing skills to make abstract depictions of the human body. An expert saw his work and granted him permission to work with real, recently deceased human bodies to expand his work. Leonardo began dissecting human bodies, and through his artistic depictions of his discoveries in his notebook, he made breakthroughs in our understanding of the human heart, the spine, and the breathing tube. Anatomy is just another example of a field of science that Leonardo da Vinci excelled in. At the ripe old age of 67, Leonardo da Vinci died in 1519. He was buried in a nearby palace, and even though he could no longer design, invent, and create things, his legacy is strong and everlasting, and his many advancements that pushed forward humankind. 
Leonardo was an anatomist, an inventor, sculptor, painter, mechanic, astronomer, physicist, philosopher, and even more. He will go down as one of the most influential and intelligent people to ever live, and his works inspired many more in the years after his death. He was truly a renaissance man.